Young player on a team of all-stars and veterans, what do you feel like you've learned last season to help you become a successful professional, and what do you want to build on this season in your game and also the way that you conduct yourself off the court? Um, you know, last season, you know, being around such great players, the uh, only thing I could do was learn. And I took in all the knowledge I could from all these great players the entire season and just put little bits and habits into my, you know, my game and my lifestyle. Uh, these guys have instilled a lot of knowledge in me to, in becoming a better basketball player and a better, you know, young man. And, you know, being 21, you know, this is when you start to learn how to handle a lot of things off the court as well as on the court. So it, it was a great year last year just learning and uh, getting better as a basketball player. For this season as well, what, what do you want to add? Uh, I feel like it'll be, you know, similar. Uh, year two, I have a better understanding of the game and, you know, a better feel how to, you know, live on my own and handle business and do things like that. So uh, coming with the same mindset and just I'm a lot more comfortable now. So middle section, second row, Peter Bach Bay Area News Group. Uh, it had a little bit of a star turn in the finals there and a lot of talk about you. Uh, in basketball wonk circles in the offseason. What kind of advice have your teammates given you about handling a little bit of stardom and obviously trying to grow that going forward? Uh, to be honest, uh, I didn't know I had any stardom, so I kind of feel like I'm still the underdog. I feel like a rookie still. I feel like I still have a lot of things to prove. Uh, I really could care less who's talking about me or our projections and things like that. I just want to continue to keep getting better and learning from these guys and take advantage of the opportunity that I've been given. Third row, right hand side. Uh, Brian Witt, Warriors.com. How happy, how happy are you to have Andre back this year? And then also, uh, what advice, if any, have you given to Jordan Bell about approaching his rookie season? Um, uh, it's great to have Andre back. Uh, not only as a teammate, but as a big brother, uh, he helps me out a lot, uh, way beyond basketball. And it's great to have him in my corner just supporting me and you know, believing in my talents and things I can do. And um, it's always great, man, to have someone like that that's you know, guiding me in the right direction, you know, just for my career and, and for my future. So it's huge. Uh, third row, uh, CJ Little. Peterson, SF Bay. Pat, how has is, how is life changed for you after winning an NBA championship in your rookie season? I mean, there's not a long list of players that have done that. So wh what's changed in your life since then? Uh, I mean, since getting drafted and making it to the NBA, my whole life has changed, you know, drastically. Uh, people know who I am. Uh, it, it, I'm handling money that, you know, a lot of money I've never – ever had in my life so now I'm taking care of myself and learn how to manage time and things like that so but winning the NBA championship is is unbelievable to, to even believe that I was a part of such a great team and a, a great championship run uh, it's kind of hard I'm still kind of living in the moment and relishing you know all the memories from last season because uh, I still can't believe I've, I've made it this far, but uh, it's crazy. Uh, a lot of people, you know, want autographs and pictures and things like that. Uh, uh, my whole life has really changed. Second row middle. Hi, Katie Baker from The Ringer. Um, the Warriors have such a deep coaching staff, obviously, Coach Kerr, but then the assistants are, um, you know, such great coaches in their own right. Was there a particular assistant or assistants that you worked particularly closely with last season? Uh, Coach Willie Green, uh, he worked me out each and every day. And uh, he instilled a lot of knowledge in me as well. He helped me out throughout the entire season, just you know, staying level-headed, you know, knowing my time would come, just continue to work hard, and that hard work would pay off. Uh, that's probably the, the coach that I have the closest relationship with. Uh, second row middle. Hey, Patrick. Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press, Democrat. Uh, you made some real strides last year. By the time the playoffs came around, you were really integrated into the team. Now there's you know, new parts to the puzzle, new people being incorporated. Do you have any concerns that 
you know, that those gains you made, you have to fight for again? Uh, no, it's great to add new players to the team. Uh, those guys do what, you know, we as a Warriors organization love in players. And uh, for me, I've always had to, you know, show and prove that, you know, I, I deserve to play. And that's never been a problem with me. I'm just going to continue to do what I've been doing, and that's working hard, continue to work on my game, and getting better as a basketball player. I'm still young. I'm still uh, still learning. Uh, as long as to be surrounding your team, it's always something that happens, something in the news. What's it going to take to kind of keep the team together and kind of let that stuff penetrate the chemistry? You know, we just focus on what we can control. Uh, try not to, uh, you know, listen to the outside noise, keep ourselves incubated. Uh, we dealt with a lot of it last year. Uh, we know it's going to be ramped up and revved up more. Uh, but we just have to make sure we can control and focus on the things that we can handle and control. You one of your key roles? Is that one of the reasons you have a presence in this locker room? Um, I don't know. You know, it's just it's just a matter of maturity. You know, um, you know, just understanding, uh, you know, what's going to come at you um, and figuring out ways to deal with it. Front row center, Connor. Or excuse me, uh, Anthony. An Anthony Slater with The Athletic. David, was it either here or retirement? And if so, how close were you to leaning towards retirement? Uh, yeah, it was basically that. Um, but it was a couple, uh, probably a couple weeks after. You know, I just uh, was thinking about it and you know, had a, good, a few good conversations uh, with some people. And um, it just felt like giving it another shot. You know, I felt good. You know, I enjoyed the, the run. It was uh it's an unbelievable experience, and I enjoy being in this group, being a part of this group um, and the organization. So, you know, why not? Reverse blue. Connor, turn out San Francisco Chronicle. Mm -hmm. uh, David, you probably had one of the best speeches after that game five win. How how long did that feeling stick with you um, uh, after? No, I, I was I was buzzing for a good uh, two three weeks, man. You know, we just um, I think everybody enjoys things, um, feels a certain way about. You know, winning or accomplishments um, differently. You know, for me, I'm all about the experience. Um, you know, and it made me better. You know, it gave me a better perspective. Uh, made me a better human. Hi, David. Janie McCauley from AP. Um, it's it's not every championship team that can stay together with so many guys back. Um, right. What does that say about not only you guys as a, a team and the camaraderie, but also just um, Bob Myers trying to make this work and. Uh, with everybody. Yeah, yeah I think, uh, you know, this is one of the, you know, this, this is a, a great environment, um, basketball environment to be in. And um, I think, you know, when you've been in the NBA for a lot of years, you, 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 you don't experience this sort of environment. Um, and it's not so much about the talent. It's just literally the energy that's here. Um, you know, the ease and the comfort that exists here and uh, the willingness to want to come in and, you know, work every day continue to get better um, that's unique and I think that's what everybody sees and feels uh, you know particularly for, for a few of us uh, who have been other places um, and know that um, it's very rare to have an environment like this um, coupled with the success uh, in the NBA second row left hand side the David Jeff Ferrado Barry news group can you tell us something that Andre provides you guys that everybody may not know and and how important was it for you when, when you heard that he had uh, they had resigned him uh, yeah, I think um, you know, his versatility obviously is is a great asset to this group. Uh, his ability to basically play off all five positions um, and you know be an elite defender, uh, but his wit, you know, he keeps everybody on edge in terms of um, you know accountability and um, you know, just what the approach is going to be. Um, you know, I enjoyed playing with him last year. It was a good good opportunity for me to see him up close. You know, somebody that I competed against for a lot of years. Um, around the league. Uh, John Flynn, Metro newspaper in the back. As a veteran who took a lot of your career to get to the championship, what have you instilled in Patrick McCaw as a rookie who got there in his first year about the gravity of what he accomplished? I, obviously, um, it's not guaranteed that it'll happen. You know, I think um, there are guys who experienced a lot of success early on and then, um, you know, teams change and you know, systems change. and. So I just you know, my thing with Pat was to just take advantage of it, you know, relish the moment. You know, obviously he's got a bright future, um, super talented kid, super humble kid. So, um, you know, that's it. You know, maintain that humility, um, you know, always be coachable, uh, the basics. 
Front row, Chris Haynes. Chris Haynes, ESPN, D West. Um, I don't know if you asked you, but sorry, I was listening to something else real quick. Um, is this officially your final season in the NBA? Uh, I haven't really made that choice. Oh. Uh, I don't know. You know, it's every these last, you know, I guess three or four years have just been however I feel. You know, if I if I feel like I can still go, still be effective, you know, maybe yes, maybe no. You know, I'm I'm just uh, enjoying the ride, man. I got a lot of freedom. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not confined by a lot of the things that other folks are confined by. So, you know, it's just a matter of how I feel. You know, if my emotion is there, if my, my mind is still able to uh, get through a season, then who knows? Mm -hmm. Front row, left-hand side, Ramona. Hi, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. Just, we've asked a lot of the guys who've come up here about going to the White House and celebrating the mm -hmm. championship. You've obviously pretty, made your views pretty well known. Where do, you, where do you come down on it? And if you guys didn't go, what kind of statement do you think that would make? Well, we've been Coach is going to handle that. I think that's what they, we're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss it uh, as a group. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm not whatever. It's whatever for real. I'm going to be good up here, man. So it's whatever. <laughs> do, do you in that discussion that everyone's talked about, you guys are going to have. Do you plan on being a pretty forceful voice in that discussion? I will let everybody know my opinion. All right. Uh, Tim Mott from the Washington Post. How, how have the last couple of years in terms of, I mean, you were obviously a big minute guy for a long time. Mm -hmm. Last year, I think you played eight, ten minutes a game. Um, is, is that kind of managed workload, especially over the course of a long season, even a playoff run, maybe going to allow you to play a couple of years longer than you might have originally thought, given that you can kind of right. come in and, and do a little bit and then, and then hang out? Yeah, it's, um, it's been an adjustment. Um, but, you know, it's something that you know, I never fought. I mean, you know, I kind of made this decision myself, you know, so I took myself out of the whole starting ideology. And uh, I mean, even last year, you know, there were a few teams that were still trying to throw that at me. And I'm like, bro, that's that's dead in the water. Um, so, you know, uh, it's just more about being comfortable, learning as much as I can, being in environments that like this that are stimulating me, uh, keeping me interested, uh, keeping me on my toes, you know, and, and having something to, you know, go after and, and play for every night. Anything else for David? Uh, one more, Felicia, second row, left-hand side. David, after you guys won the championship, I mm -hmm. asked you how you felt. You didn't have any words at that time, but you, you mentioned that you were bugging. Um, how would, how did, the, what word would you use now, now that the fog has cleared? And, and secondly, are you prepared for ring night? Because you yeah. bug out again. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm definitely ready for ring night. Uh, but, you know, I just feel, you know, it's like a, it's an accomplishment. You know, you, you know, sometimes, you know, people kind of short side, you know, the sacrifice and the commitment that athletes make. Um, you know, a lot of us have been playing this game longer than we've been doing anything else. Um, some of us will be professional athletes longer than we were anything else. Um, so, you know, a lot of that, you know, a, a lot of us cry only, only on basketball. I mean, there are many guys in the NBA that won't cry for a death in the family, but something in sport will get them emotionally uh, caught up. Um, that's how invested we are in this, uh, physically and mentally. Um, so, you know, winning, you know, obviously is a, a great achievement, great accomplishment, um, and it's something that you you know, internally does something for you um, that a physical reward doesn't necessarily bring. So the ring is physical, but the accomplishment of winning, um, you know, knowing, you know, that you won is something that feeds us differently, you know, particularly when we've done this all of our lives.